What's cracking, peeps? Team Money up in the heezy. Happy Saturday afternoon. I uh, hope everybody's doing well today. So we're going to do another collection update. Um, I got a bunch of stuff in the mail today, and I also went and saw my buddy, Dr. Butcher, who is constantly selling awesomeness on the Cult Media Facebook group. So um, I grabbed a bunch of stuff from him today. Uh, and on top of that, I got stuff from a package from Ronin, Dark Force, and... Um, um, Grindhouse, Grindhouse Video Tampa. So let's get into this. Before we get into this, though, I have five movies for sale. If anybody's interested. Um, so first up, I have Levide, which I'm trying to sell. Great movie. Love it so much. Surprised nobody bought this yet. Um, Avenging Force, Michael Dudikoff, just an 80s action flick. Um, and then, of course, the classic Revenge now. These two movies, modern classic Revenge, but these two movies are Region B, so maybe that's why. Um, Y'all got to get with the times and get some, get yourself an all-region player. Um, it's worth it, because those movies, just, well, I mean, Levide is awesome, and I don't know if it has a U.S. release, but... So I've got those, and then uh, newly, as of today, I got Emmanuel and the Last Cannibals. Um, I didn't realize that I already owned this, so... Um, I got an extra copy of that and an extra copy of Happy Birthday to Me from Indicator. And these are both great limited releases. Um, Region ABC 2, Indicator. So if anybody needs any of those movies, let me know. Um, I should have a few more things to be to compile to sell um, <clears throat> as well in a few days. So stay tuned for that. I might have like a bunch more movies I'm going to list. Uh, but for now, that's that. And then... Uh, so I watched this movie called The Prodigy. I don't have it here because I lent it to my brother. I let him borrow it um, to watch. But uh, I thought it was really good. Um, and I highly recommend you guys check it out. It's a modern... It's kind of... The best way I could describe it is like the, is like as the omen meets... Um, um, Child's Play meets The Orphan. Um, and it's basically just about this little boy... He is the born resurrection of a serial killer, and um, he it's basically like a like a story of like a, a young family. They have they give birth to this boy, and he is evil um, at his core, and he starts committing heinous acts. And his parents don't want don't know what to do, and it's kind of like a mother. It comes down to like a mother's love uh, for her son and what she will you know, what she will do to try and, f how much she'll put up with, basically, before she just realizes that, um, um, she gave birth to the devil <laughs> himself, and uh, no, it was really, really good, though. I highly recommend you guys check it out. Um, I thought the acting was real solid. Um, the use of CGI in the film, the little bit that there was, was really good. I thought really, really well, um, well in infused with CGI, I guess you could say. I don't know. Um, and then, the um the kill scenes were pretty creepy and there was just really a lot of tense edge of your seat um disturbing moments genuinely i thought it worked it was really good um i read some mixed reviews on it people saying that it really didn't bring anything new to the genre the story and its dealings with re themes of reincarnation and um the what's the word um um transference of a soul type thing it wasn't it was a weak story but i liked it i thought it was good so check it out that's uh the prodigy all right now let's get into the update first uh we'll go with some of the things i got from um dr butcher so as always um i always jump on his sales because he always has awesome stuff so i grabbed a bunch of kinos from him cherry 2000 uh just some 80s like weird um action i guess i don't know Something about uh, Melanie Griffith plays a delightful, futuristic bounty hunter on a mission to find a robot replicant of a rich man's short-circuited wife. Uh, but it's a futuristic film dealing with time travel and uh, sci-fi adventure. So if that's Cherry 2000, never seen it. If any of you guys have seen this, let me know. Um, and then we have The Satan Bug. I've never seen this one either. Sounds really good. Kind of sounds like a 50s sci-fi. Um, but sci-fi, but very much influenced by the world at the time. And it deals with, like, this Satan Bug that will destroy all of the universe or whatever. 
um, and how can man stop it, that sort of thing. It's from 65, black and white. Satan bug, uh, and then I grabbed the Destructors, which is just a classic early 70s um, action thriller uh, starring Michael Caine, Anthony Quinn, and James Mason. Amazing cast. Uh, it has to do with, like, I think... Um, Drug, drug lords and, and um, federal agents combating drug lords, that sort of thing. Uh, and then we have this one, Defiance, which I don't really know much about. John Flynn. Tough as nails thriller about a merchant seaman who takes on a gang of thugs. So I'm always down for that. Jan, Jan Michael Vincent. Art Carney. That's awesome. Defiance. So that's from 1980. Then I grabbed uh, a couple more. Filling out my... Um, uh, my redemption line. I'm really stoked because uh, ever since I've been buying things off of um, Dr. Butcher, he's been selling a lot of redemption films. And as you guys know, as I've mentioned, I've been trying to complete my redemption collection. So uh, I get it as much as up to date as possible. So I grabbed the Demons, just some good Jess Franco. Jess Franco's, um, you know, stab at the demonic possession um, films of the... When was this? The uh, seven, early 70s. So, cool. And then I grabbed um, one other redemption title, Hatchet for the Honeymoon. I've never seen this movie before, but I've heard pretty good things. So, I uh, definitely want to check it out. Mario Bava, Giallo film. Um, so, I'm always down with that. And then I grabbed uh, American an American Hippie in Israel. Don't really know that much about this movie, but I do know that it is uh, tripped out like psychedelic um i don't know tripping infused just craziness pure craziness it says here machine gun wielding uh, memes uh robots bloodthirsty sharks free loving debauchery and poignant anti-war monologues by raving mad hippies all this and more in in are present in this um writer director prophet amos affairs allergical, independent, allegorical, I think, uh, independent film in American Hippie in Israel, far out. This is the three-disc set from Grindhouse. Uh, I got number 1095 of 2000. So that, again, is from uh, Dr. Butcher. Thanks, dude. And another one uh, from Dr. Butcher. I got Remo, The Adventure Begins. This was also put out by Twilight Time, I believe. Um, but uh, it's a really nice Arrow version. I didn't know that Arrow had put this film out, and it's got um, a booklet inside as well. So just another um, James Bond. The director of one of the James Bond films, I think, did this one. And it's, uh, you know, just another 80s action flick. So that's Remo. Then um, two more from Dr. Butcher. Uh, he sold me this copy of Dawn of the Dead. I'm actually really stoked to have another copy of this movie because it's rare and it's my favorite movie of all time. Haven't decided what I'm gonna do with it, but I couldn't pass up the deal, so uh, I'm not selling it as of right now. But I know that Second Sight is gonna be putting out a great version anyway, so I don't know. I just bought it because it was cheap and I could. Uh, and then this one's The Psychic, which was recently released by um, Scorpion, I think, or Code Red, one of the two. Uh, and this is the 84 Entertainment Blu-ray, like mini, uh, hard box edition, I guess, uh, limited to 250, and this is number 157. So super cool. Um, yeah, that's awesome. And you guys know me; I collect my little media books. So there's another one for the collection. And all right, so this is now we're gonna get into the stuff that I got today, with the exception of this. I bought this at Walmart the other day when I picked up the Prodigy. Uh, this is the Final Wish. Lin Shay has certainly become the face of modern commercial uh, possession type horror, I guess. Not even, just like soft um, mainstream horror films. But anyways, uh, this wasn't horrible. I watched it. I kind of enjoyed parts of it, honestly. I didn't think it was a horrible film, but it's totally like she just always plays the same role. Um, but I like anything that has to do with the monkey's paw, the whole like mythos of the monkey's paw. So I was actually kind of into this film. It was okay. Um, um, but yeah, so that's that. Uh, the Final Wish. All right, now today I got a package from Grindhouse. Um, well, actually, let's do the, the Dark Force Entertainment one first. This I ordered like two weeks ago. It finally came today from Dark Force. 
uh, Street Law. I don't really know much about it, but I know it's starring Franco Nero and Barbara Bach, which is awesome. And it seems to be like a 70s or an 80s action exploitation flick. Um, Code Red never puts the years on the back of their stuff, but uh, that would be my guess. Um, 1974, it actually does say that, sorry. But yeah, so that's uh, Street Law. If anybody's seen this one, let me know. I'm thinking it's probably going to be in the vein of like a lot of the other Code Red vigilante uh, action thrillers that came out from around this era. Um, so, Street Law, new one from Code Red. <clears throat> Alright, and then uh, from from um, Grindhouse Video Tampa, I got a couple DVDs. I got uh, a couple Wild Eyes, Don't Look. This just looked kind of fun. Uh, low budget slasher movie. A uh, group of kids from the city embark on a rural getaway for a holiday vacation, and they soon become the target of a local, local murderous psycho. Hence the cover, Don't Look. We've seen these movies a million times before, but I enjoy them. They are cheap and cheesily funny. So, um, enjoyable, rather. I like them. So, we'll see. Some of them are bad, though. And then another one from the Wild Eye Raw and Extreme line, we have Bigfoot Blood Trap. I don't know, that cover's pretty badass. So, a beautiful young woman inherits a large piece of forest from her estranged grandfather. While hunting there with friends, they discover a Bigfoot creature who lives on the land and who has been there for decades. Once the beast is captured, they encounter a strange scientist with a bloody, mysterious connection to the monster. And this crazed maniac will pay any price to continue the bizarre breeding experiments he began long ago with Bigfoot in his attempts to create a race of unstoppable killing and lovemaking machines. I don't really like when they blend in the whole, like, the beast-like sex subgenre of horror, but whatever. I did like Don't Go, Don't Fuck in the Woods. That was good. But Bigfoot Blood Trap. This reminds me, I recently watched uh, The Man Who Killed Hitler and then The Bigfoot. And I really like the beginning of that movie on the subject of Bigfoots. Um, but I thought, I thought that it was like, they took it their time with like the whole beginning and telling the story of the, of the guy and, and what he did to Hitler, that portion of it. But then I felt like the Bigfoot, it just like, tr it literally trans, it's so like cliche and predictable that in the middle of the film, it trans, it, uh, it, what's the word? It switches to like, okay, we got that. Now we're going to go to the Bigfoot portion and I just felt like it was choppy. It wasn't a smooth transition from telling the story. I don't know why I'm giving you guys a fucking synopsis of that, but Bigfoots. But I just felt like it was really rushed, and the, and the Bigfoot portion of the film was really rushed, and I just didn't enjoy it that much. But the first half of that movie was pretty good. I thought the actor was great, the guy who played um, the dude who killed uh, Hitler, and then the Bigfoot, but I don't know. We'll see. These movies are always pretty bad. Um, but I love, I have, I'm a sucker for Bigfoot uh, movies, as so many of us are. All right, and then last from um, from Grindhouse Video. I don't know why I can't spit it out today. Um, the Grindhouse thing. But uh, a spectacular pastiche of 80s. Is that how you say that? Pastiche? Uh, of 80s horror. All right, being, I've heard a lot of good things about this. Close calls. Ready? Being grounded is nothing new for Morgan. With the house to herself, fridge full of food, and box of drugs stashed in her closet, it's party time, as usual for this spoiled teen brat. All she has to do is tend to her sick grandma when her father leaves. But then the phone rings. As the night closes in, Morgan is soon haunted by visions of her dead mother, attacked by her grandma, and terrorized by a series of bizarre phone calls. Between these disturbing calls, the drugs she has taken, and a few surprise visits from some unexpected guests... Morgan's paranoia grows as she now believes everyone is out to get her. To make matters worse, she keeps forgetting to give Grandma her meds. Will Morgan survive this night of terror, or will she end up losing her mind throughout the course of these close calls? This psychologic fever, fever dream of a film also features a suspenseful score by Rocky Gray, The Barn, and 1031, and visual effects by Les Glanchela, Contracted. So, awesome. Looks like a nice mishmash of some good indie horror filmmakers involved in this film, and that's why I grabbed it. It was put out by Scream Team releasing, and I collect. I actually think Scream Team releasing is doing some really solid stuff. Uh, so, yes. Awesome. Close calls. Whoever put out that Redcon 1, that company, Epic, I think, and Scream Team releasing, they kind of remind me. They're like two up-and-coming um, 
production or releasing companies that are putting out a lot of good modern horror. So uh, keep your eyes open for those companies for sure. All right, and last but certainly not least, we have The Sims on Blu-ray for the third time. Are you guys ready? I love it. I love The Sims. No, I'm just kidding. But doesn't that cover artwork remind you of The Sims? It totally reminds me of The Sims. All right, but yeah, so this is it. Uh, the not-so-long-awaited, not-so-highly-anticipated third release, or no, second release, of Just Before Dawn from Code Red on Blu-ray. Seems to be the trend with Code Red and Scorpion re, re put, putting out a lot of the same stuff, but giving them slightly better transfers, slight, slightly better tra treatments. But I'm a little bit suspect about this one, to be honest, because I know that Jeff Lieberman had no say in it. He had nothing to do with this. Apparently, he didn't even know about it um, or wasn't invited to take part in it or in any way. So maybe they just didn't want to pay him or something, which is disrespectful because it's his film. I don't know. I can't speak for Code Red. Or Scorpion, whoever is behind this release, but I can say that I love Just Before Dawn, and if this transfer is any better than the one that's previously out, I'm down. It's worth it to me. Uh, I hate the new cover artwork, but I like this cover artwork. Um, so, yeah, it'll be interesting to actually put the older release next to this one. I believe there are features on that release that aren't on this one. Let me know if I'm wrong about that. Uh, so it'll be good to like kind of match them up. I didn't grab it, so I can't do it right now. But uh, but I know there's the original uncut version. Both extended cut and original uncut are on this. And I'm hoping that... Because if I can remember, one of the cuts on the original Code Red Blu-ray was ass. It looked horrible. But one of them was like an actual transfer. Um, so I don't know if they maybe did like an upgrade of both the extended and original cut for this one. I'm not sure. But uh, there's a brand new on-camera interview with stars... Greg Henry, Chris Lemon, Jamie Rose, and producer David Sheldon. Sheldon, uh, and it includes a vin vintage featurette with interviews with Chris Lemon, blah, 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 so on and so forth. But it says nothing of the director, none of the features on the back have anything to do with um, Jeff Lieberman, and that's always upsetting when it's not director approved. But again, if the transfer is better and it does have some new features, then I'll just keep them both because I love this movie. It's so fucking good. It's one of my favorite slashers for sure. The Wilderness Slasher. One of my favorite wilderness slashers that's not a franchise. Absolutely. 100%. I love it. All right, guys, that's it. Thank you so much for watching this. Um, I will catch you guys later. I just bought tickets to go see Aaron Lewis in concert tonight, dude. Rock on. I am not an Aaron Lewis fan, but I do like Stained. And I do think he's a good singer songwriter. Uh, I think he has a great voice, and I really want to see him live at the Flynn Theater because the acoustics in that place are amazing, and he does have a really, really fucking good voice. Very powerful, very strong voice, but I'm not a country boy by any means, and I don't really like his country stuff, but I'm going to go in hopes that he plays some of his classic songs on acoustic and just for the just for the experience. I was driving this morning to go grab my mail, actually, at the UPS store, and I see this big old fucking, I don't know how many, wheeler truck parked in the University Mall parking lot, and it says Aaron Lewis right across the side. I actually posted a picture of it on Instagram, so if you follow me, you can see that. But uh, it was pretty cool to see. And then I was like, fuck it, I'll get some tickets and go see him tonight. So that's what I'm doing tonight. Um, I don't get out much on the weekend, so <laughs> um, it'll be fun. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Have a great weekend. Hope you enjoy yourself. Hope you have good weather wherever you're at. Talk to you on Monday. Stay tuned. I'll have a big uh, Diabolic DVD unboxing to do. Peace.